I call the honourable member Sue Moroni. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, doesn't that just about say it all? That last speaker who thinks that this legislation is to be debated as a piece of theatre, because that's what we just had. Chris Ockenvold from the National Party thinking this is a piece of theatre. This is about people's lives. And I don't know what it is that that government doesn't get, how they've become so out of touch so quickly that they don't realise that this piece of legislation is about everyday people's working lives. It's about what they do when they leave their families every day. It's about the relationship that happens in their workplace. It's about them returning safely to their families at the end of that day and having the income with which to live. That's what this bill is about. It's not a piece of theatre. It is about real people's lives. And I've become used to hearing Simon Bridges butcher the English language in this House. But here he is at work butchering, butchering people's rights at work this time. Butchering people's rights at work. And that's exactly what's happening with this piece of legislation. And the member who just resumed his seat, Chris Ockenvold, told us it was a good piece of legislation and then couldn't even tell us why. He had not one reason to offer this House about why he thought this was a good piece of legislation. Because I think deep in his heart, and those of most of his colleagues, they know it's a, it's a piece of nonsense. It's a piece of nonsense. Because what are they doing but actually trying to take away people's rights at work, rights at work and for what purpose? Because let's have a think about the moment in history where we sit here in New Zealand. We sit in a moment of time where we are trying to struggle our way out of a global recession. And doing very well. And not doing very well at it, actually, Mr Ockenvold. Not doing at all well. We've been in the recession for five long years and that government's been promising to get us out of recession every single year since they came in and they've been failing. But I digress. So we're in the midst of a, of a global recession. A global recession, by the way, lest we forget, that was brought about by a lack of regulation. By a lack of regulation. And I think people have almost already forgotten that. Brought about by a lack of regulation on the financial sector. That's what brought about this global recession. And who have been the people who have lost out as a result of that lack of regulation of the financial institutions and the investment bankers like John Key? Who have lost out? It's been ordinary working people who have lost their jobs in tens of... Well, actually, every day you pick up the paper, there's 50 or 60 or 100 jobs being lost somewhere in New Zealand. And they are the people paying the price. What's the solution? The solution that the national government's come up with is the same one they have always trotted out, no matter what the circumstances. The solution is attack people's rights at work. And that's the solution they're putting up to getting us out of this global recession. Well, it's an absolute piece of nonsense, and no wonder Chris Ockenvold can find not one reason to say why he thought this was a good piece of legislation, because it's not. It is not about a level playing field, Mr Bridges. And I listened to his first reading speech, which was, uh, I think, yesterday in the House, and he said the reason for this was to create a level playing field. Well, hello, Mr Bridges. Have a look at the environment in which we're operating in. When we have 1,500 people lining up for 30 minimum wage jobs at supermarkets every day of the week, as if there were that many jobs every day of the week, but that's, yeah, tell us about the level playing field. Because tell us where, tell me where the power balance is in that exercise. When you've got hundreds of people lining up for a small number of minimum wage jobs, guess where the power lies in that relationship? So David Order. Bennett would have us think that the people lining up begging for the minimum wage jobs have got the power in the exercise. That is how far removed the National Party are from reality. 
They are so out of touch with what is actually going on in New Zealand. And one of the, one of the parts of this bill actually says that they're going to require all, any workers taking strike action, you know, this dreadful strike action that is obviously causing our global recession, what strike action where? Oh, no answers. What is the problem they're trying to fix? So they want these strikes that aren't taking place, these striking workers to actually have to give notice. Well, I am in the middle of a debate on a first reading um, of a bill of my own in this House, Mr Speaker, where that government is refusing to actually agree to, uh, to workers having any notice of their jobs going, of their jobs being made redundant. I've got a bill in the House now asking for it to be put in the law that there is notice given to workers whose jobs are going to go, whose entire income is going to be taken away from them. That government refuses to give that notice in the law. And yet here they are, here they are saying, Striking workers, who actually aren't even striking, by the way, because we don't have a problem here in New Zealand on this issue, are having to give notice that they might withdraw their labour for a period of time from the employer. Well, that just goes to show how out of touch that government is and how against the ordinary working person they actually are. They do not value workers. They actually don't value working people or the contribution they make to this country. And bills like this... Tell, show, show us and expose the National Party for what they are. But the other piece of this bill that I want to draw people's t attention to is something that we shouldn't even be debating in the year 2013 in this Parliament, and that is the right for working people to have a lunch break, to have a morning and afternoon tea break. And this is an issue that's really close to my heart because I, in fact, wrote the piece of legislation that they are amending. I actually wrote the amendment that was brought in by the Labour government in 2008. And while Kate Wilkinson, who was the Minister of Labour at the time, was um, going about writing this amendment that says that employees don't have to have a break, they can bargain it away, while she was writing that piece of legislation, her department was reviewing the law that Labour brought in to see how it was working a year after it had been established. And you know what they found? They found it was working fantastically well. They found that of the employers, and I think there were something like about 1,000 employers who they interviewed, that just 11% of them had had to make alterations as a result of that law. And the vast majority of that 11% of employ employers said it was actually a really good change, that it made a difference, a positive difference in their workplace when they gave more regular and longer meal breaks and rest periods to their workers because productivity went up and health and safety issues came down and employee morale went up. That's what they told the reviewers. That's what they told them. Here comes this government coming along want, with their dreadful, dreadful record on health and safety have they learnt nothing from Pike River Mine? Have they learnt nothing at all? Because here they go again, not understanding that people, people's right to take a break at work is a fundamental issue around health and safety. When people do not get regular breaks at work, that's when things go wrong. They have learnt nothing from the Pike River Mine inquiry, and they need to get that out and read it good and proper before they pass this piece of legislation, because the impact of what they are trying to do here will actually reduce people's rights at work. That will make their workplace less healthy and less safe. And it will mean that we will have more accidents at work and productivity will go down, employee morale will go down, and health and safety problems will go up. Is that the brighter future? Is that the brighter future, Mr Speaker? Because they campaigned on a brighter future and I can see no brighter future in this piece of legislation. I can only see New Zealand going backwards to the bad old days of the Employment Contracts Act. I call the Honourable Member Cam Cor